fellow RC freaks, subscribers, watchers, first time viewers, thanks for watching. Uh, let's get this set up just right. Yes, yes. Yeah, there we go. Okay, haven't made a video in a little while, been busy. Uh, I'm moving. Uh, I got a new car, got a new job, so yeah, I've been busy. That's why I haven't had any video. I've also been doing some stuff. First up, I had some people ask, uh, a lot of people watch my a video going over my Nitro RS4 3 Evo Plus and they say they want to get a drift car, Nitro drift car. And first thing I say is, well if you get it as a drift car you'll have to uh, lock up second gear. You'll have to basically tighten down the basically, it's basically a grub screw that tightens up against the spring which doesn't allow the basically the clutch uh, the second gear paw to come out and grab second gear because when you're drifting you don't want second gear to kick in you only want first gear uh, so first I want to show this this is just an Evo uh, the Evo this is a one speed so this can drift but the engine is all the way in the back that's an issue a lot of people uh, wanted a nitro drift car, so HPI came up with a chassis that you could take your engine, move it to the center, because of course if you move the engine to the center, you will have better weight distribution front to back, instead of a lot of stuff being to the back, because you'll have the engine, the batteries, fuel tank up front, but most of the weight with this is in the back, if you were to actually weigh it, and it's to the right. So, HPI first came out with a, a chassis, and then they actually came out with a vehicle, and these are quite rare, and there are some, I've got mine running, but honestly, I hate the exhaust system on it. It's, it's very odd, and the engine runs like crap, but uh, they came out with the uh, RS4, the, the Nitro RS4 3 Drift, so they actually came out with a Drift version. And with this, they changed things. Um, came out with a whole different chassis, whole different layout for everything, whole different exhaust system, which, like I said, is crap. Because uh, the exhaust comes out the side of the motor, goes into a barrel, and then comes out an exhaust tube. Which, this uh, the person I bought this from, uh, he screwed me. I had to buy a brand new top deck. Uh, yeah, there's stuff wrong with it. Uh, so there's a uh, new uh, steering, uh, crap, uh, steering, a uh, top steering plate, and that's where all this stuff connects to. I'm probably going to take the receiver out of this because this I don't run this. This is a rare car, probably one of my most rare. Uh, like every now and then, my my Nitro RS4 3 Evo Plus, the Vaughn Gittin Jr. version that has the 69 Mustang black with green accents and green wheels. Every now and then those will come up for sale, used. Very rarely they'll come up for sale new. Uh, the one I got I was able to buy new from Maniacs Hobby. Uh, I'll try to get some running video of it today. Uh, I'm off today so I have some time to do some things. Uh, I have to move things to my new house. Uh, I haven't moved my RC stuff yet because I had to pack up all my parts, all my cars. My fifth, some of my fifth scales are over there. Uh, but ten scales, uh, I, my collectibles are already there. Uh, which are the vehicles that I don't keep. Uh, where the rest of them are, where the batteries are, where the fuel is. Because, like I said in other videos, if something goes wrong, I want them to be on the complete other side of the house. So maybe I can get those out because all my other vehicles can be replaced. Yeah, it'll take money, but they can be replaced. A lot of the collectibles, they could possibly be replaced, but it would be hard to a lot harder to replace them because most of them have been discontinued. One uh, that I'm actually working on, well, it's actually two of them. This is a Losi Micro. Um, these are very fun little cars. Uh, 124th scale. Uh, yeah. Damn cat. 
you better not kill this. My cat, I don't let my cat in here because when my cat gets in here, he smells that everything's been outside. So he decides to piss on it. And this has been pissed on. So I'm going to kill him. I'll probably skin him up and cook him and see how good cat tastes. Although I probably ate cat through uh, some Chinese restaurant. But this is a regular one. This is the regular classic chassis. Uh, brushless. Uh, I traded my... Well, no, I... No. Uh, when I traded my Hemota Mayhem and a T-Max roller that I had, I traded it for a, uh, a Jado. Uh, my Kyosho MP7.5 Kanai Edition 3. And a uh, Super Tiger 40. Uh, basically a airplane glow, a glow engine for an airplane. They're not really known as nitro engines on airplanes. They're glow engines. Because you can run them with no nitro at all. You can run them 0% uh, nitro and 100% methanol. Usually about 14 to 20% uh, oil content. But then you could run 5% nitro. Nitro just gives uh, a little more power. But with my micros right now, what I'm doing is I'm changing the chassis. Uh, at the moment, I'm not going to name what chassis this is because there's not many left and I still have to buy one for this. But it is uh, all, all carbon fiber. Damn it, he pissed on this one too. I'll kill him. Uh, I'm changing the brushless setup out from this. I'm going to put a Castle Mamba X Micro on it and a uh, Team Orion 10,300 kV motor. Uh, it can handle 3S like this, but it's a higher kV motor and a better ESC. I don't like the receiver, ESC, everything built into one and the five wire servo. I don't like that. But yeah, the, the chassis is really nice. It's an LCG chassis. It lays things down. Instead of the servo standing up, it's actually laid down on its side. Uh, but all carbon fiber and uh, you got some aluminum parts like the servo mount is aluminum now. The motor mount is aluminum now. Uh, the battery, not really tray, but the parts that keep the battery located are aluminum. It's a lot easier to set the uh, slipper on this now because with this, you have to take seven screws off just to get to things. With this, I can just take off the top deck, and which is not that many screws. And I can complete, and uh, eight screws on the bottom, I can completely remove the front and rear diff. But the, the thing that I really liked about this chassis is it came built, but you have to take the top deck off and everything to install uh, everything on it. And uh, you have to modify the servo internally if you're using a stock servo. But I'm going to be going over Savox once I get uh, the new ESC. And I'll be using a FlySky receiver because they're so small. Um, but yeah, I've, I've got a lot of plans. Also, uh, I'm going to be going, I'm converting into a Truggy. So I'm going to convert this to the 124th Truggy. I'm getting rid of the front and rear. I may leave the front bumper on. But getting rid of the rear bumper. Adding a wing. Uh, putting the Truggy tires on. And I also did a uh, on off switch delete. And with that basically all you have to do is. Take off the wires. And then solder them together. So basically now as soon as I plug in the battery. It turns it on. You just got to remember when you're done to unplug the battery. Or you'll kill your lipo. Because, yeah, uh, these don't have a low voltage cutoff. Especially if you get rid of the on-off switch. Um, but, yeah, this these are quite fun. Uh, the build sort of makes it feel like a kit build. Except you're not having to build the diffs and stuff like that. Uh, at the moment, I'm working with a machinist. These come with plastic diffs and plastic diff cases. I want aluminum diff cases and uh, al metal diffs. Steel would be a little too heavy, just too big, too bulky, too too heavy. Uh, so I'm looking at getting aluminum differentials and gears made. I've already uh, drawn it up on in a, on CAD software. Uh, so basically, all I have to do now is wait for. Uh, 
I mean, the place that I took it to, it's, it's going to cost quite a bit just to get some. Uh, it's it's going to cost about the price of a brand new T-Max just to get some parts made. Uh, unless I can get a lot of people that are interested in metal discs for one of these and then I'll need like 50 people so I can make a very large order. It would cost a lot more if they would have to model everything up in CAD that even then they have to take the modeling from CAD and put it into a CNC machine and yeah that it, it takes time and these parts are so small that uh, I think there's uh, some certain bits that they had to special order and CNC bits are not cheap and yeah just having it done is not cheap but as parts for these become more and more less available because they have been discontinued uh, either stop running it or make your own or make parts that will last and that's what I'm doing I'm making parts that will last so yeah I the, the biggest thing I like about it now is uh, the tunability is a lot easier uh, so right now what I'm waiting for is a hot racing uh, long arm a arm kit that comes with uh, all eight a arms and the longer drive shafts uh, a new sidewalk servo uh, the Mamba the Mamba micro uh, some more batteries, uh, shock towers front and rear, aluminum, uh, new tires, new wing, a wing for the truggy, which I had a friend that had that, uh, because it's impossible to find the wing, and eBay doesn't even have the wing. Uh, I think it's uh, LOSB1563, don't quote me on that exactly. Uh, but yeah, I'm getting everything to make this all aluminum and get rid of as much plastic as I possibly can. And I want to get rid of the stock motor setup. And I have a buddy that uh, has a... I gave him my, uh, my brush version. And I also, uh, when we were doing all the trading, I traded some stuff for... Uh, I gave my brush version and a sidewinder 7700 kv setup for him for the thunder tiger and the kyosho because he didn't like nitro so sure take some electric stuff uh i'm trading this he has the brush version but he wants brushless so i'm trading this receiver esc the spectrum dx2e and the brushless motor for a spy a, 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 a castle setup uh the uh, castle sidewinder 3 and I, then I'm going to sell it and buy more parts. And everything I do to this is going to be done to this. So soon, both of these will look exactly the same, just different colors. I'm going to, this this one, I'm going to de-anodize all these blue parts and just make them straight aluminum. So yeah, enough about that. Back to the HPI drift. I, I have projects in the works. Um... With this, it moves the motor to the center. Parts are damn near impossible to find for this, especially the uh, rear uh, drive shaft that goes from the the spool back. Uh, can't find it. I almost lost that. I thought I had, and I started looking. I, I was able to find a length, but I couldn't find anyone that made that length. I can't remember what it was. Uh, I think it was like 178 millimeters. Yeah, so it was quite long. Um, but the really cool thing about this one compared to most other RS4s is uh, stock. Since it's a drift car, you can set the toe, you can set the camber. There's a lot more tuning. Uh, there's a lot more tunability with the suspension compared to a a regular uh rs4 that just has these plastic links that you there's there's nothing threaded to shorten or lengthen it so yeah you're sort of stuck but yeah this is this is originally what they came out with this was the evo and then people said we want a drift chassis hpi came out with a drift chassis and then they came out with a ready to run car so yeah this is a it's fun car uh, I've ran it twice. Other than that, it sits. 
uh, I do need a new motor for it. I don't like the G3.0. It has a smaller carb. Uh, so I'm going to get a new T3.0. It's only $89. And I'm going to slap it in here. Uh, I've got a whole box of RS4 parts. Uh, my Super Nitro is almost done. I have a, uh, I installed a Navarosi 2.5 in it. Should be quick. Uh, I'm not looking to go extremely fast with it. I have a two-speed transmission in it. I mainly want it because of the history of it. Uh, yeah. I also got some x-rays that uh, I'm in the process of building an NT18 that I bought. Uh, yeah, I, I have more stuff, but I'm not showing it on video yet. I don't like showing stuff until it's clean or finished. Uh, I don't really show builds until they're done like with this low C. but I will say the next one that I'll do I'll take pictures as I'm doing the build to show how easy it is it is time consuming it takes about two hours to move everything over uh, the part that's the biggest pain in the butt is a lot of people don't realize carbon fiber is con uh, conductive so when you put the ESC on you have to wrap it, it the, the chassis comes with this uh, 0.1 millimeter PVC wrap so you put it around, but then you have these rubber O-rings, not screws, O-rings, that there's a little hook on each side of the top deck, and you wrap it over. Uh, I actually had to have my fiance's help because you had to hold down the ESC receiver board, then get the O-rings hooked in somehow, and then get it over, and yeah, it was just a pain in the butt. Uh... But yeah, just waiting for parts now. Uh, new shot, everything's going metal shocks, A arms, uh, steering rack, uh, shock towers. Uh, everything on this is going to be aluminum. Uh, the uh, diff cases, differentials. Uh, right now it has a plastic uh, spur on it, but I have a, a 50 tooth plastic uh, metal spur that I'm going to put on it. And I like the 50 tooth for this one because this is sort of my speed runner. Uh, and I have a 14 tooth pinion that I'm going to run on it. And with a 10,300 kV motor, this thing should move. I'm, I'm wanting to at least hit 50 miles an hour. And you have to realize a scale car, whatever speed you're doing, like 50 miles an hour, you would have to mu multiply that by 24. And that would give you the scale speed. Uh, I do know I've hit 32 miles per hour with this. That is a scale speed of a little, of around 800 miles an hour. So, yeah, that's pretty insane. Um, but, yeah, as of now, that's it. Uh, and you have, we'll have more videos of these. The micros, love the micros, love the, I love the extremes, I have to say that. I love the extremes of the hobby. And that's probably what this video will be about, the extremes of hobby, from the smallest little vehicles. I have some mini Z tires that I've ordered that I have to make adapters to fit. And I've got a lot of people in the Losi Micro Club on Facebook that are, I'm making the, micro, the adapters out of JB Weld and talcum powder to make sure that JB Weld doesn't stick to the inside of the rims. And once I make one, I can then make a mold and then make one after the other after the other instead of relying on a 3d printer make them out of plastic that can break jb weld is stronger but yeah that's probably what this video is going to be about is the extremes of it oh yeah then also my gt3c is going to the buddy with uh i told him as soon as i got my it4s which is right here uh i was going to keep this for about a month to make sure this had no problems the only problem i have had with this let's see if it yeah, the uh, eye, the eye right here, uh, the light comes on and off. That's not a big deal to me. Uh, it'd be nice if it stays on. All it really is is a warning light uh, if the battery is getting low or something like that. But the biggest thing I was told is if you drop it, you can possibly lose the pen. But I put... Uh, some stuff down in here that makes it uh, basically, I basically took some uh, uh, shoe goo 
and stuck, put a little bit down in there so it grabs the pin a little more because I don't want to lose that pin because there are certain very minute things that you can't do with your finger on this like uh, naming something, the keyboard, uh, not even your pinky will work. But yeah, this is a, and one thing I was also told about this, if you drop it, uh, this will be, uh, the steering and the, the throttle will start going crazy. Uh, for one thing, I don't, I try my best to make sure mine don't get dropped. I don't put them on ledges that are only like uh, four inches wide, like on a fence or something, a wooden fence. I don't put it there. I've had this for two years. And I've never had a problem. The only problem I have had with it is the scroll wheel. If uh, you try to go one way, it wouldn't go that way. It would go the other way. Basically, just took it apart, wiped down the uh, surfaces with some uh, denatured alcohol, and cleaned it right up. But you have to be careful because that denatured alcohol can also delaminate some parts. So, yeah, I got to get back to uh, everyday life now. But thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, I love my subscribers. I really appreciate everyone that watches my videos. Um, if there's any videos that people would like to see, running videos of a certain vehicle, let me know. I have a lot. Uh, I, I don't mean that to sound like I'm uh, bragging, but I can do a lot of reviews. Uh, I can do a lot of running videos. I have a lot of vehicles. So even my rare ones. If you want to see more in-depth look at it, let me know. Uh, we have a comment board for a reason. Uh, but I do have a passport now. A GP, not a passport, uh, damn it, a Garmin uh, Speed. But I'm also going to get the Dynamite. It's smaller. And I'm going to start uh, using, I'm going to start taking my Armor Raider. And my Armor Raider is going to get converted to a Speed Runner. So that should be fun. But thank you for watching like usual. Uh, as more time goes on, uh, hopefully I'll get to the new place. My new place, has, my new RC room is going to be is three times the size of this one. So yeah, it's a, it's a 12 by 14 room. This one is... Uh, let's find out. Exactly. Okay, 10, well, nine and a half actually. Bye. Ah. 10 by seven and a half. So yeah, not a lot of room in here. And I have no room to walk that way. None. Uh, new place. I'll actually have room for my futon. To actually be able to use it as a futon is supposed to be used. Sit on it. Lay on it. Uh, I'll be hanging up my television. So I'll get. Uh, I'll have more actual work room. Um, this, is, this top thing is going to get taken off. I'm probably going to get a bigger desk. Uh, but. With this tiny room, this is the biggest I can go. I'm going to get three more of these uh, storage drawers. And uh, a couple plastic toast to put my big parts in. I'm basically going to, all my parts, I'm, I'm going to separate them. And just make it easier to get to everything without having to search and search and search through each box. Now I know pretty much what's in each box, but still it's a pain in the butt. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Peace. I gotta go do life now. Thanks for watching. Peace.